Even worse, Tabak's book reveals how the symphony of public money by consultants, contractors, and attorneys is still taking place in spite of the project's universal failure. In August 2017, the village of Mount Pleasant announced the hiring of a project director for the, for the proposed $10 billion facility. Their choice, and only candidate considered, was Claude Lois. A former auto parts store owner and part-time mayor of Burlington, Wisconsin. Kaboom! Tis and city planning are tax incremented financing districts, which are areas where the property taxes are frozen at a base value, and the increased revenue from the rising property values is used to fund development projects. TIF is a tool to stimulate economic growth and revitalize blighted or underdeveloped areas, but it also has some disadvantages and challenges. Some of the disadvantages of TIF are, it can divert tax revenue from other public services such as schools, parks, and fire departments that rely on property taxes. This can create fiscal stress for the local governments and reduce the quality of public goods and services. It can create inequities between TIF and non-TIF areas as the latter may not benefit from the improved infrastructure, amenities, and services that the former enjoy. This can widen the gap between rich and poor neighborhoods and exasperate spatial segregation and social exclusion. It can be subject to political influence like it is corruption and definite mismanagement as the decision-making process and allocation of funds may not be transparent, accountable, or participatory. This can lead to wasteful spending, favoritism, and conflicts of interest. It can be risky and uncertain as the expected returns on investment may not materialize due to market fluctuations, unforeseen costs, or external shocks. This can result in debt burdens, financial losses, and failed projects. TIF affects ta taxation in several ways. First, it reduces the tax base for the overlapping taxing bodies, such as the county, the school district, and special districts that share the property tax revenue with the municipality. This means that these entities have to either cut their spending, raise their tax rates, or find alternative sources of revenue to maintain their services. Second, it increases the tax burden for the property owners in the TIF district, as they have to pay higher taxes on increased value of their properties while not receiving the full benefits of the public services funded by their taxes. Third, it may create tax increment distortions as the property values in the TIF district may not reflect the true market value, but rather the artificially inflated value due to the public subsidies and incentives. In Sheboygan's case, 200 million. TIF affects the day-to-day -day operation of a city in various ways, depending on the type, scale, and impact of the development projects funded by TIF. It can also create some negative externalities, such as traffic congestion, noise pollution, environmental deg degradation, displacement, and gentrification that affect the quality of life, health, and well-being of the city residents. Well, most of the new TIF districts are old TIF districts that are just being resetting the clock, as they say. So 27 years wasn't enough. And so you're going to redo most of downtown, redo the marina, redo all that and at the cost of $100 million? Holy shit, Batman. And it's like, yeah, that's just how Sheboygan's doing stuff. And when our citizens alerted to this, you're hearing it now. You have fucking no clue this is coming. It resets the clock for an additional maybe up to 27 years. That you, the city then we have the black hole, the Ryan Sorensen pit that used to be the armory. Where's your millions of dollars of development? I'm thinking you can't because it's a filled-in waterway. You had a great armory building there, and you did tricky, tricky, dicky, dicky, and you got rid of the best building in town. Hey, live with it. You got that hole there. What's the hole? What wonder what Jimmy Theodore thinks about that. Kentucky Fried Chicken, man. Been here a long time. Next door to Blast, Chester's from Plymouth is going to be throwing a trailer in there and selling chicken just out of the blue. And it's kind of like it's a slap in the face to the whole brick and mortar investment thing. And what about Asher? You know, Asher never really went away roll this out publicly and give us a chance to weigh in give some input on this thing okay
So nobody in the city was qualified to step in interim? That's crazy. Plus, I'm doubting you even posted these jobs yet.